Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the final stream we have here for close qualifiers. This is playday number 15, the last one for EU, and we still have two more spots open to see who will try and fill up, along with MIBR Team Liquid, Space Station Gaming, and, of course, Luminosity. Yeah, it's been been quite a uh, dominant factor for the NA side, but the last time had some very, very, very close games. But really, I think the EU bracket, these are going to be the ones to watch. We saved the best to last. Let's have a look at the bracket and see exactly what has happened and how we got here. We're going to have G2 versus BDS as our first matchup, and then Secret versus Fours. So I think the, the top one, that is the one we were kind of all expecting, the G2 versus BDS matchup when we saw the brackets come out. You look at them, and if I don't see every single round played, so 45 rounds in G2 BDS, I, mm. I, I'll be lost. There has to be everything being piled in by both those teams. G2, yeah. we know how much they want this tournament. Of course, not uh, getting free Dream Act Montreal. BDS also not getting free Dream Act Montreal, and we'll kind of touch upon them. But then even if you look at Secret Force, there's two teams who have their own little bit of history as well. These are such stacked matches, and I just want to see it just go all in. No holds bars match, just hell in the cell. Yeah, and, and all of these teams have played against each other as well before, and it's just going to be incredible matchups. G2 versus BDS, to me, is the, going to be the most intense game of the entire qualifier. This is for all the marbles. I don't know, because, yes, I, I want it to go the full distance and have a mm. great matchup, but if I look at it, I can easily see a 2-0 from either side, a very quick really? one. I really? can kind of see that happening. Secret 4, on the other hand, I don't even want to begin with that match. I don't even want to touch it, James. We're going to have to touch on it, unfortunately, later on. Forwards versus Secret should definitely be an interesting matchup, but first of all, we're going to have G2 versus BDS. Let's have a look at the map bands and see exactly where we're going to be heading to for this particular matchup. So, it's all about the map bands, demo. Has to be a consulate ban from G2. No, no, they've left it open. Why have they done that then? They've banned Clubhouse, and that's a really strange one. Statistically, consulate is G2's worst map. BDS, their best map, is consulate. Why have they done that then? It is interesting. Maybe G2 have a lot in mind then. They want BDS to pick consulate here, which, you know, would be a, a sound map pick for BDS. And they want them to pick consulate here so they can Perhaps. just kind of shut the hell out of them. And we've already seen that BDS are counter stratable We saw MKs take them considerably far with some good work coming out from Bagel, their coach. But yeah, we will see the mm. consulate pick coming out for BDS. And Cafe will be the pick for G2. Cafe's been a really good map for G2. And they also did win against BDS 7-2 during DreamHack Montreal. So, like, Cafe's a good pick. It was the map they did lose to Na'Vi, however. Look at BDS. That's their worst map. And that's yeah. the kind of way the banning works is on BDS side, you either ban, like, the other team's strong map, and then yeah. that means you're kind of left open with your well, worst map. And, well, you look at G2, they've just went ahead and straight and seen that opportune moment. Uh, also, the Villa ban for BDS, I want to say that is to target G2, not allowing them to yeah. have that very big, deep map. We've seen what they did against Orgos already in the competition with a 5-1 sweep. So Bank will be our decider. Border, again, that's one of G2's most banned maps. We never really see them play that. Mm. I think these are expected, these three maps. Uh, I don't really see them going... Yeah, I mean, so like B way. BDS's map ban strategy always, like, in during the Challenger League season, they just banned out Villa and Cafe, like, mm. pretty much every single yeah. play day unless it was already banned or whatever. So like, they never went to Villa and Cafe across the entire of the Challenger League season. So, yeah, like definitely expected bans coming yeah. out from their side, banning out the Villa, and obviously G2 picking mm. up the Cafe, which, as you said, statistically, a very, very good map for G2. And even the ban from BDS, seeing that G2, that's one of their most picked maps as well. They're a big fan of that map. Yeah. So, overall, both teams have done the research. They've done it well. And it feels as if those were the expected maps that kind of outcome of the bans. Well, let's get into our first map here. It is going to be Cafe Dostoevsky. It's G2 versus BDS. The winner of this matchup will book their ticket to Croatia for the OGA line next month. Good luck, have fun to both teams. I didn't know you were Russian. I've practiced that pronunciation a lot. That's honestly. crazy. I had no idea. So, RX, why is your BDS in small letters? I'm interested um... now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is his different than everybody else's? Yeah, I think everyone else oh has capitals. Uh, yeah, uh, yikes. It's unfortunate. Didn't get the memo. No, nope, so, so bans. Didn't get the memo. Burmite. Um, from BDS. That's a strange one for Cafe. Typically we see, like, a Jackal being banned out, or, uh, like, a Thatcher. Burmite's a very strange one. 
Yeah, Thermite's definitely like the Capital is a good ban as well. Yeah. But um yeah, the Thermite's a bit out there. BDS really as well. That. I think there's a factor here for BDS because we haven't really seen them go to Cafe that much since Dreamhack. And they didn't go to it at all during the Challenge League season. I think there's an element of like strat saving here. I think G2 are a really heavy counter striking team. You know, their their coaches, Sua and Shas, definitely doing the work there. I think they said, you know, always like seventy plus hours into just counter striking purely. So they should have a lot of prep done for this particular matchup. But you know, going to cafe, things might be weird. The thing for G2 is that if you give them enough time, they will decimate any team they come up against. Yeah, yeah that's a fact. Whenever they have that mindset, ready to go in a best of three, they're pretty unstoppable. Thing for G2, if they do not beat BDS and don't make it to the LAN event, that means they have to go for open qualifiers. And open qualifiers, that's usually cleaned up within the space of three days. Doesn't yeah. really leave the coaches with a lot of time to do things, and that's why this tournament kind of suits them well. They're managed to have these three-day gaps in between, so then Shash and Sua can do their jobs. Also, interesting note is Shas's birthday is on the 9th of December, which is the day after the OGA line concludes. So it could be a good birthday present for him there if they do win the OGA line. But first of all, they're going to have to get there and they're going to have a formidable opponent. The winner of Challenger League Season 10 in BDS make their way through into Pro League as well very decisively against Sisu. This has been just such a dominant team that's not really come out of nowhere. Panix and Shaiko, both very, very experienced players. And they've really been the star players from BDS. Yeah, it's all about Shaiko. The destroyer of hopes and dreams, as I have dubbed him. And let's see if he can try and shatter some of those for G2. Both these teams have their history. They even date back all the way to year two, where we all know what happened back then. We've seen them go up against uh, each other during Montreal. G2, they had the first open engagement. And they won that series 2-0 for the first round. But then in the actual decider match, it was BDS who knocked out G2. Yeah, and... Uh, they knocked them out of groups. Really, really big upset that BDS managed to pull there, and they actually managed to finish third over the entire DreamHack tournament. But we'll see how things do go down here as G2 begin their attack here on Cafe. Because because of G2's map pick, BDS will pick the side, and they've opted to go defense first. Nades will come through into bathroom from Uno, and able to find anyone there. This is a very aggressive hold from BDS. Uh, I feel as if it's expected, though, from the European region is to try and hold down, like, Piano Cigar Shop as long as they can to waste up a lot of time and utility and don't really give the attackers that much options to really go for. Like, they have to push these guys. They can't really maneuver around that. Eastside Take doesn't really exist in Cafe. You can only push in via Red Stairs. That has been the way Cafe has played out. Even the old Cafe, it's always been about the Red Stairs control. If you take that away from the attackers, make them use a bit of time. I do like that though, being able to use the IQ scanner to find out where the ADSs are. And then that kind of frees up for uh, like Kanto the fire and the stuns and also Unua's nades. So I like that combination there of IQ and Thatcher. Yeah, that's going to take the castle off the board as well, but it's going to be Panix who finds the first kill of the round. Kanza Raketi already off the board. The star player from G2 already down. That's the Zofia out of it, but they've already opened up the castle and they've started to do the work. With just about a minute left to go on the clock. G2 really have to start to think about their push. BDS still have control of Cigar as well, and G2 are not in the building at all. Just looking for somebody from BDS to give themselves away, but BDS very firm in their hold, very heavy towards that west side of the map, only leaving the one guy inside the site. The drop comes in. Goga tries to be the first man up to try and bat away these aggressive defenders. Look at Shaiko, just underneath the hatch, doesn't care if anybody's going to be watching him. He's fishing for the kills. There's one down, and well, Shaiko cleans up. Goga, Rafael does get Fabian. Now all of a sudden it's a 2v5, and G2 looks as if they were going to drop the first round. It's looking a bit squiffy for them. It's definitely very clutchable still, but 30 seconds left to go on the clock. Diffuser not within their grasp, and Uno doing his best to try and recover it. Pengu moves up on the white stairs instead to see what he can do from the other side. Uno does find one onto Raphael, and it could be Ranchero going down as well, but there goes Uno. It's all down to Pengu in a 3v1 clutch situation. He finds one onto Shaiko. Let's see if he can find two more. He's got a very clutch situation to Ringu. He gets RX as well. It's all down to Panix to try and bring this in, but five seconds left to go on the clock. Panix, very smart move from him. He doesn't have the Nitro, but Pengu doesn't have Diffuser either, and he's not going to be able to find him, and there we go, G2 will drop the round, unfortunately, a really good attempt from Pengu, but BDS will take the round. Yeah, nice try, just because there was that information still being in the bomb site, because really G2, they were never in position to utilize the IQ scanner and take out those cameras, and very well played by Panix to know, I have time, I can drop below, 
it's all good. Uh, and yeah, so BDS, they take the first round. A little bit sketchy there in the kind of final 15 seconds, but still they pull away with it. J2 really struggling there on that opening phase. They couldn't push their way down in towards red. There's a lot of bodies. Uh, again, perhaps that Capital ban coming in to bite them a little bit, because Capital would have been able to make quick work off the man behind the shield, even having the smokes as well to cover off some crosses. That probably would have helped in the long term. If I see a team set up so heavily in towards Cigar Shop, I don't know why G2 then don't try and play the heavy window game in towards Piano. Yeah, I mean, they didn't have that castle open, right? So they could have done a lot of damage there exactly. on the crossfires. I think that was their plan, but Kanto went down so early on that they weren't able to kind of capitalize on that movement. But BDS will take the first round, and consequently, they'll go down to Kitchen and see what they can do there instead. It's interesting how they played that, given the fact there's a Thermite ban from BDS. You wouldn't expect they would hold so heavily, given the fact that there is a Thermite ban on the board, right? Like. You can't do much with Habana on this map in terms of opening up walls. I think it's just something the BDS will do anyway, even with the Fermite ban, just that aggressive standpoint. Yeah, uh, and, and that's that's kind of what I'm thinking as well, like, because they're holding this again very aggressively. They've got to yeah. rotate through Bakery as well, kind of reminiscent of Rogue set up here on Cafe as well, where they hold it very aggressively into Bakery and they have that active rotate, even though the fact that there is a Thermite ban, yep. they don't necessarily think they're playing around it that well, but I guess we'll see where the kind of momentum is here. Of course, it is, that is forcing G2 to bring the uh, Habana every round. So BDS pretty much trying to hold the entirety of the bottom floor. Very spread out. So relying on everybody oh. being able to pick up a kill. And there's RX. Fires through. Can't do again. First man dead. Unlike him. Very unlike Kanto to be the second opening death now. And this is not good at all. We'll see G2 are going to start their top floor clear, but so far things not looking too good for them. But it is that defense cafe. You know it's just going to drop all the way down. It looks like they have droned out this top floor completely, and they're going to know that it is completely clear. BDS not going for that heavy room game just yet, but they have a very spread out defense across the bottom floor. Just relying, I feel, on every player to do a part. And we know BDS. Every player can show up out of nowhere. You know, of course, Shaiko being that main man, he has so many moments. Panics has been a real big standout for me personally. Yes, I feel definitely. this month for him specifically has been a great month to get this man back on track. We know the history of Panics, a veteran Pro League player. He's been in and out of Pro League, dropping down, had to start from fresh at BDS. And I'm really glad that guys managed to get himself on a really solid team and prove why he is a great player. Yeah, definitely. He's been a big standout player and uh, he actually did manage to top frag in their relegation match. But let's see what he can do now. As he does have that Nitro available to himself rather than a deployable shield this time. G2 are taking that vertical control though, and who knows, going to try and do some damage with the book from above. It looks like they're going to go mainly for a bakery push, it's looking like. I'm not really sure because Fabian's actually rotated down the bottom white. But of course, there is a bit of a hole open here. Go, going to go for those pre-fires and see what he can do to try and take control. You know, of course, still doing the damage above, and it looks like everyone's getting set up for a bakery take as Fabian's rotated all the way back. What a time uh, being eaten away from G2. They have vertical control, sure, but it's not a hefty amount of vertical control. That's the kill that the Oso needed. Rafael is gone, and it will be that full west side take in towards Bakery, and it just relies on how well BDS they can play together as a team. Shaiko does pull it back into his team's advantage and still a bit of a menace towards Coat Room. And now for G2, they've stopped. They don't know where to go from here. They don't have a lot of cover as well. Udo will try and take up the mantle to see if he can eliminate Shaiko, but there's Fabian. That's a good push. Great kill coming out from Fabian there, and the Habana, he's got, well, doesn't have Diffuser right now, but they should be able to recover that and potentially go for their plant sooner rather than later. They're in still a 3v3, however, nades will come through from Uno from above into Kocek, but they've really got to try and make that push right now. Fabian does make his way all the way into side, just sprints all the way through. He's got to know where he is, but no, he gets taken down! Oh no, what a disaster! Renshiro finding two on the board, and it's all down to Uno to try and bring this in in a 1v2. Desperate to find the kills. He's got to know someone sinks, but Renshiro closes it out with a triple kill, and BDM we will take round number two. Things looking beautiful for them on Cafe. I don't know what it is this tournament, but Kaid's playing in this position with a sniper shoddy. <laughs> they just rack up the kills. I it's think insane. Just, just Kaid on Cafe. We've seen so many kills come out. We've seen aces come out from Kaid's in Cafe. It's just been a really good map for Kaid main. So may maybe it's the fact we just see a lot more Kaid on this map than any other map. Could you imagine playing against two of those sniper shotguns? Oh wait, Goyo has entered. You've also got 
Renshiro on the board, right? And he's like the master of holding angles. Mm -hmm. If you peek him, you're dead. Oh, yeah. So Left-handed player and all that. Yeah. Well, we're going to see the Mozzie six pick coming out from RX here, but the Nook making an appearance for the very first time. Okay, Interesting that they wouldn't bring a book for this defense. I'm kind of thinking this is going to be a rush. Well, at the moment, it's not really working for G2, the whole buck strategy. They're no. bringing in an operator that is still very new, very fresh. Team's still trying to figure out what's the best way to play her. From my standpoint, I still think very underwhelming as an operator. She, uh, she's not like a massive surge that creates a new meta compared to what we see whenever Nomad was brought in. Think of how much of an impact she had. She still sees fans nowadays because she is that strong. But Nook not really that operator to change the meta. Yes, we know we've seen some nice plays, but it's not like a consistent amount that really Nook brings to the table. It's like a one-hit thing. It's very rare we see a Nook really go in big. Well, when normally when G2 push the site, if they do go for that rush, they'll all stack up side outside of the, the reading room door outside. They'll Zofia their way in and they'll just push all the way through and then Uno will come up white stairs and cut off the cross from there. Normally Uno's playing Capitao here, but G2 have opted to ban that Capitao. Yep. So, you know, we'll have a look at exactly what they want to do with BDS holding this very, very top heavy. And I think this is a big reason why they brought the Mozzie, because of the super shorty. It's just in with BDS, we haven't seen a smoke in their lineup at all. Well, I mean, you, you look at uh, bringing the Mozzie. He is that jack of all trades, master mm -hmm. of none. He provides so much to the defending team, fills any rules. Not having the smoke, I feel, in this bomb site's okay. Whenever BDS are playing a very aggressive standpoint, sure. it, it, for the most part for BDS, they just try and kill anybody before they even get an opportune moment to plant. Yeah. So in the long term, I really don't think that matters. There's still C4s. There's three of them right there. Or, or sorry, two of them right there. And I think that's enough of your denial that BDS need. Definitely. It is a Nitro heavy meta at the moment. We've talked yep. about that multiple times already, but yeah, there we go. You know, is going to make his way up white stairs, but he's going to detonate the Elamine, so they're going to know that he is pushing up there indeed. Not going to be able to pull off any sneaking maneuvers. His impact nades are going to go down as well. That's going to take Renshiro's Maestro Cam off the board on Heaven. We should see G2 start to take control over this top floor area. Recharges are going to go through into Piano, making sure they have that extra angle and easy entrance coming through. BDS still holding strong as we get into the second half of the round. G2 take a lot of time with just clearing out where they want to go to. Half the round already gone. And BDS, they still have their firm standpoint. I like the position of having the bathroom playing aggressive oh. and just an easy peek. And once more, Kanto Riketti, for the third deaths. time, hasn't got a kill and has been killed off right off the rip. Oh, a great start. No refry coming through just yet, but flashbangs are going to go down deep. Arx has managed to find his way all the way back into Frieza as Goga is going to go down to Renshiro. And now all of a sudden we find ourselves in a 3v5. G2 not looking good here as Panix finds one of his own. That's a nitro kill onto Uno. And all of a sudden, this is looking very squiffy right now for G2. It's all down to Pengu and Fabian, but there goes Fabian. It's all down to Pengu in a 1v5 clutch situation. Can the new new 1v5 clutch master pull it up? Let's see how it does go down. It's 40 seconds left to go on the clock. He doesn't have Diffuser, and nope, he'll go down. It's going to be a flawless round from BDS. A complete fumble from G2. No trades coming through from their side. Okay, so BDS, they got the defense first, which we know, Cafe, defender-sided. Yep. Campus yep. not being there, we know it was a massive yep. operator for like every Correct. map, because it's a universal. Absolutely. We've seen G2 pull back. We've seen G2 yep. kind of go from a very big deficit and have won games. We've already seen that so far in their match against G2, or G2 versus Org, we've seen that in that match. They went 5-1 down on Villa. They pulled it back, they won 8-6. It can happen for G2, but this is an Org we're dealing with now. This is BDS, a team which has been an absolute terrorizing threat Defender, inside of Europe. Stomped everybody inside of Challenger League. Rightly so, they took that first place. Rightly so, they moved their way into Pro League with very little effort at all. And my word, I just, I would hate to be playing in Pro League next season. Don't forget, this is G2's map pick. They wanted to come to Cafe. This is a map that BDS do not go to that much. They went to here a couple of times during DreamHack, but other than that, they haven't really yeah. gone here. Yeah, it's their least played. Yeah, so this is... I, I honestly think this is kind of a mistake from G2 to go to this map because I feel like, you know, G2, very, very counter-strat heavy map that if they'd gone to a map that BDS you know, normally do play, they might have had a better idea of what's going on, but maybe then you're thinking as well, okay, maybe BDS is just going to change up all of their strategies anyway, so it mo won't really matter that much how much counter you're actually going to do here. So. I guess there's like no different theories about how you want to go about it, but this first map so far, not looking good for G2. 
they desperately need a couple of rounds on attack if they want to bring this in for themselves. Let's see how they do get under round number four there. Next, bar cocktail lounge attack. Console is the next map. And that is 100% a BDS mm. uh, map. And we were kind of questioning, saying, why didn't they ban that first? That is G2's worst map statistically. And that's BDS's best map statistically. So uh, I think that whenever we look at it, G2 have to have something ready for that. They have had yeah. to prep for it. But whenever you go in already being a map down, potentially, with the way G2 are kind of traveling that way, it could be really tough to really pull out a consulate. We know how good BDS are already before we've even seen G2 play out against them. Flashbang's going to go down, though. Going to be burning the ADS as well as know, Trying to push someone out that position next to New Papa. Arag's going to pick up the opening frag, and Rafael going to pick up one of his own. Panics is going to find one as well as Goga does eventually find that refrag onto Rafal, and this is not looking good for G2 all of a sudden, as they find themselves in a 2v4. Or down to Pengu and Goga to try and bring this in, but they've got plenty of time on the board, and they have a little bit of utility remaining, of course. Goga has that diffuser, and has that skylight control. This is, uh, just... <laughs> I don't even know how we can sum up G2. This isn't G2. What, what, what have people done with G2? Where have they went? Because, clearly, these are imposters. This is perhaps the weakest looking side of G2 I think I've ever seen. Kanto still yet to get a kill. Kanto K okay, 0 and 4. Pengu, the only man with a bit of life, who's trying to create some chances, and nobody else from G2 really in it. This is just so strange, James. Well, it's all down to the Spaniard of Goga to try and bring this in in a 1v3 clutch. Goes to the pre-fire onto New Balk to try to see what he can do, oh, but the knife comes out at the wrong time, uh. and he just gets deleted by RX. BDS take round number four, and their fourth consecutive round in a row. Absolutely beautiful from BDS. Four... Oh. Four oh. And Kitchen is up next again, which was another very strong bomb site for BDS. Perhaps I mean, it's, I mean they've it was... all been pretty strong, haven't they? <sighs> yeah, honestly, reading looked even better than Kitchen. It was a flawless round. Yeah, Kitchen was like the only one where it looked as like if G2 actually had a bit of a plan behind it, pushing yeah. it towards Bakery, but just Ranchero shot it all down from playing in towards the back of the cooker. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I'm really, not, I wasn't prepared for this, James. I was not ready. I just... <laughs> what is happening Is right anybody now? ready, G2. chat? Were we ready for this? All the French fans, exactly. I'm sure you guys were ready for it, but... Also, also on Strafe. Yes. If you don't know, you can download the Strafe app and you can vote on your favorite teams and who's going to win. You win points and stuff like that and get up in those leaderboards. On Strafe, I think it was something like 75% vote for G2. 76. 76. 76. So, it's not over yet. Obviously, it's just the first yeah. map. Mm -hmm. It's just four rounds. You know, G2 can easily it's recover this. It's just four rounds. It's just four rounds. <laughs> oh, no. But they're really going to have to pull their socks up if they want to try and bring this in for themselves. Another interesting one as well is that uh, G2 uh, have played a total of 69 uh, matches, I think, over like the course of the year. Yep. BDS have played 27, but each of them have a 70% win rate. Really? Yeah, isn't that, that weird is the way the kind of statistics work out? And of course, you guys can all find this out in your strafe app at home. Definitely. Great plugs coming through. Yes, we have to get the plugs going. We'll see round number five getting underway. It's going to be the second time that BDS have opted to go to a kitchen and the kitchen cooking defense. And we'll see exactly how that does work out for G2. I wonder what kind of push they want to do here, because that last time they pushed in, through the upstairs area, it didn't work too well for them. Inu's actually opted to bring the Ash rather than the Book here, which is interesting. We kind of said that the Book hasn't really been working for them. Yeah, Buck was uh, was very short-lived for G2. I, I'm guessing that they did bring it originally for the nades, and they're still slacking on the nades. You know, they can't really apply pressure to some of the more common positions. You think about Dark Spot uh, right into the back of like, the kind of half wall. Uh, you know, that's an easy nade toss. Mm. Typically, we see uh, like a maestro playing behind there, has cover, yep. can sit in his cameras, and then even just eliminating Ranchiro, more importantly, I feel would be a big thing. And just the all overall lack of soft destruction for this bomb site isn't going to bid them too well. There is breaching charges from Kanto, but only two of them. And I wonder if anybody else uh, has brought them. We could see uh, like Pengu bring them as well, but uh, I don't know if Claymore's kind of be more favored here. No flank protection, no Nomad, no Gridlock. But then again, BDS haven't really been roaming. 
just been very clear nope. off-site holds. But Kanta's gonna go down already. That's a nice nitro coming out from Panics. Of course, there was that Valkyrie camera above He's the chandelier again. in dining. James. And yeah, Kanto. Four opening deaths for Kanto three, Rikete. Three opening deaths because it was Fabian who went down last round first. Yeah, but... so that's four then. Oh, right. Yeah, no, you're right. Because this is round number five. This is round number five. That's true. Did you study math mathematics? Apparently not. What happened to your trigonometry? Uh, Didn't do you well, did it? Mr. Mr. Basic Man numbers. sitting here, he just pulled away with a yeah. with a basic grade. <laughs> Dan Adrikil, however, going to pick up Kanto immediately. Recharge Things not looking too good for G2 all of a sudden. So to do the recharges from above and see what they can do here to try and do a bit of work and opening up those cross angles. And again, it looks like G2 are going to go for this bakery side push. And Ranchero is actually injured right now, but Rafael should be able to pick him up. He's actually behind the bakery right now, so maybe not so much as Pengu. We drain it out for himself as well as Fabian. Could be draining him in. Fabian does manage to be. Sorry, Pengu makes his way in, but he'll get shut down instantly. That's crossfire established by Shaiko here to help out Rafael and Ranchero will get revived. It's not looking good for G2 at all. There've been no trades coming out from them so far. Fabian is trying to look for his trade as well as he moves all the way through into Bakery. You know from above, Fabian is going to crawl his way in, and Rafael does go down. This should be an easy refire from Shaiko, but now he's going to try and play his life. You know just find Ranchero. Now we find ourselves in a 3v3, but only 15 seconds to go on the clock. Fabian trying to make his way into sight and just slowly crawl his way in through these rotate holes. Gogo makes his way in as well. Fabian picks up Shaiko. It's all down to RX and Panics to try and bring this in. But no, there goes Fabian. Oh my god, to RX's Maestro Cam. But there goes Panics as well. It's on to RX with his Maestro Cam as well to try and deny his diffuser going down. Gogo, very low HP. And there we go. He's going to get back on his Maestro Cam, but no, it's going to be destroyed before he can do anything. RX is going to pull out his Alder. He's got to clutch the 1v2. Diffuser slowly doing its work as RX tries to make his way back into sight. But we've got a couple of rotates of way and open. You'll find one kill onto Uno, but instantly gets traded out. And G2 finally find their way onto the ball with Gogo locking it out. Once again for G2, being really caught up in the time. Time is killing them, but you have to give credit to Fabian. The Emperor just seen... These guys aren't doing it. I have to try and do something. He yeah. got in that initial two frags, pulled back into their favor. Yeah, but honestly, I feel like if Shaiko had played that more aggressively into Small Bakery and it didn't end up trading that kill, it would have ended with a very dominant BDS side. But, well, he retrieved the code check and we'll see no such thing happen. Round of six would get underway. It's going to be the final defense for BDS, but there's not going to be a flawless one so far. As we go to reading room and fireplace hall, this was the only flawless round that BDS Attackers had. Yeah, it was probably their best round that the, uh, yeah. they kind of had. Well, then again, Barb is also very easy. We very rarely seen G2 even get a foothold inside of the building. And granted, even for this one, they didn't really have that much of a foothold. All they, all they had was Cigar Shop and Piano to play off, but everybody else from BDS, they were sitting tight inside of the bar and cocktail area. I do like the kind of heavy C4 rips that BDS have been bringing, and very early C4 rips as well. We've seen a couple of those be like the first opening kills, I think two so yeah. far in this game. And that's just kind of play style, I think, adds into this aggressive factor that BDS have. And it's a very, um, an all-round strategy. Because yes, we see the aggressive flashy plays from Shaiko. You have the C4s from below. But still, Renshiro, as a very strong anchor, gives them that security. And every team needs to have a dedicated support who can provide that role of not only information, he can send cameras, because he really never needs to get pressured, but also know when to pick up and assist his team. See like the big brother, isn't he? Yeah, no, he is, and uh, well, we'll have a look how things go down. I think G2, honestly, they desperately need this round if they want to keep themselves in the race for Cafe. Because don't forget, this is their map pick. We are expecting them to be dominant here, but so far, even though they've managed to find themselves on the board now and they've managed to swing back the momentum into their favor, the scoreline is not great for them at all. Drones are going to go out as well from G2 across the board. We'll see exactly what kind of take they want to do here. And it looks like they're going to try and contest the top floor once again. Don't forget, last time, Arex got that opening kill onto Kanto, and it felt like after that, G2 were just falling apart across the board. Because they just couldn't get that upstairs control. G2 really struggling just overall with how to deal with this aggressive playstyle that G2, uh, G2 uh, are just struggling with. BDS have been all over the game. They have really run the show. Perhaps it is the like Capital Band coming in to get hurt G2, being able to sanction off different areas. And again, another aggressive standpoint for the Mozzie. G2, not wanting to push, but this time they know the positions they're looking for. Last time it was a very surprising play from RX. Well, that's a C4 already being lobbed away. Panix, I think, misses that one, so G2. I, I don't know, man. Still struggling with time, and they haven't really got anything for it. 
Yeah, and BDS are perfectly happy with the time that they've wasted upstairs. They're gonna retreat all the way down, but they have got the sledge on the board as well as Uno. That's a lot of soft destruction on the board for G2 to be able to open up all of this top floor and be able to start to work against BDS. But we've only got about a minute left to play with. G2 trading out the diffuser with each other, and Fabian will pick it up. We'll see exactly what kind of execute they want to do here. But BDS, everyone is still alive from their side, and they've wasted plenty of time. Thatches are going to go down, however, onto Heaven. Oh, but the Maestro nice. Cam gets moved by Ranchero at the last second, and they're going to be able to pick that up. That was really good work from Ranchero. Still another EMP, though, that Goga has yep. that can try and eliminate the evil eye. Upside down repel. Name something more iconic than Pengu and an upside down repel. Bet you can't. And uh, let's see if he can try and hold down pillars as much as they can. Oh, counter just goes ahead and sledges away the evil eye and will start sledging away off that vertical control. But for BDS, all of them are now in towards train and pillars. Not a lot of them on site. There is a maestro who fires through onto Kando. And Kando now has to try and put the pressure on to make sure he can make that success. Shaiko wins that upside down repel fight against Pengu. How has he done that then? Well, it's going to be Ranchiro who peeks out. He takes down Uno as well, and Shaco's going to rotate the way around. Ranchiro retakes control of the upstairs. He takes down Gogo on white stairs, and it's all down to Kanto and Fabian to drive this in. Kanto finds one, but he instantly gets shot out by Shaiko. Fabian trades it right back out himself. Tries to run another, he'll get two, but can't find one more as BDS will shut him down. Great rotate from Ranchiro to upstairs, and BDS in a very dominant lead here on Cafe. Let's see what they can do in attack as we'll switch it around as we move into round seven. I don't know anymore, James. This is so uns... It's so unsuspecting that this is the way the matches went so far. I was really expecting a lot more battles being fed into. Looking at the kills, G2 really not turn up. Kanto 1 and 6? Kanto Raketi 1 and 6? Something's gone very wrong here. What's yeah. happened to him? Something's gone very, is very it? wrong. Well, BDS are going to move on to their own attack, and we'll see exactly what they can do about all of this. This is going to be basically a very serious defining round right now. Because if G2 lose their first defense here on a core yeah, site, that, that's it done. I think it's over. Yep. I think it's actually, I think honestly, it's series over at that point. Because yeah, Consulate, Consulate still to come. Is, well, um, I don't well, know, Consulate can still be surprising. Yeah, yeah, G2, we know how good their management team is. We know how yes. good the coaches are. We sure. know that a big reason why this team was so dominant, because they were one of the very early teams to have Shaz. You know, Shaz was around for such a long time, yeah. was working in the shadows for a lot. People didn't actually know he existed on this team, but he had a big thing to say. Of course, now, as the kind of metas came, Every team needs a coach. We've, we've seen tier three teams, tier two teams, all have coaches, not just tier ones anymore. But we know how good both of those guys are dedicated. So as well, bringing them in, help them win invite. Still a little bit of a shaky time for G2 over the course of the year. Only tournament that they did win was still invite, did win rally. No pro league finals for them either, missing out both of them. So there was a lot of question marks above G2. And this is again, we have to come back to talk about the first time G2 have played in a tournament qualifier since Invitational 2017. But then you also think about like how many teams have actually defeated G2 in recent history, like Na'Vi, Empire, and, and then that's kind, of, that's kind of basically it. We, if you go back to DreamHack, of course it was BDS and uh -huh. Liquid who knocked them out of groups. But other than that, G2 have had a really good run at Pro League to try and recover their, their whole thing and trying to get to that PL final spot. Unfortunately missed out because Na'Vi knocked them out. But, uh, but so far, things... Things like online have been looking much better for G2 recently, but this series BDS has just looked better. not off to a great start. Like, BDS have had a very dominant run through CL. I know that we're talking about G2. That is the team. Yes. Know, the world champions. BDS in their own right have made the biggest impact. I think, honestly, even better than what Force did at Rally. I feel yeah. that this team is even scarier than Force. We showed that BDS. They beat Force in Challenge League. That They showed they were the better team. That's why they finished first. And just overall, this team is known as like Titan Killers. They are the team that upsets everybody, and they just pull away with these victories where nobody wants them to. But BDS, that's the way they are. They are always going to be there. They're a menacing team. And if a team like G2 can't shut them down, then who will? They are the monsters of EU so far. They've made their way back into Pro League, and we'll see exactly how this does continue for them. G2 still holding down strong, however, as the work is starting to be done by BDS to open up all these angles. But I like the shield coming out from Pengu. You're about to see exactly what's going on on that rotate. Really good counter stride as well from G2 to actually know what kind of Habana take that they're going to do. And they're going to open up that wall. I was going to throw nades, however, deep. And Nomads have gone down, making sure the air jabs, making sure that no one can push up. Kanto taking a decent amount of damage from that nade, but not going down just yet. 
And looks like he's gonna try and open up a vertical play for himself here, so that Pengu can heal him up. So BDS, they have their foothold inside of Piano and bring in those nades, which was something that G2 Ooh. definitely lacked and that's why they need to have them as Kanto again gone without really making an impact. So it is a four versus three. Still low denial for G2. They have the smoke, even Pengu could try and peek up using the MP5. Very difficult position though that Goga has to fight through. Freezer angle being held by Renshiro barely misses the man as he just peeks on out. Oh. And what are you doing, Goga? Pengu again does peek oh. up, and Renshiro just fires on through. This man with his aim has been on top of it today. Who oh, no, one versus three. Can he clutch up? The newcomer, the G2. How does he play it? Creeping in towards Piano, trying his best, tries to get rid of the air jab and has successfully done so, but Diffuser being planted, and information being fed does eliminate Renshiro, but two more to find, and BDS, they have the cover, they know where he is, and it should be a pretty basic crossfire angle being held, and, well, at G2, it looks as if they're gonna go 6-1 down. Very smart rotation again from BDS, open up below, and really at this stage, I don't think there's any hope for Uno. You know, very, very low HP to try and push through. He's got to know there's someone heaven right now. Oh, we'll see them as he brings up the Legion Mine, but he'll get cut down regardless. Rafael puts him down in the dirt. A BDS will move to match point. This is looking like a very strong start for BDS all of a sudden. It was almost looking like a really scuffed round for them. I mean, like, Fabian managed to get the opening pick with a yeah. wide peak from the Elder. And I thought at that point that it was over, that BDS weren't going to be able to capitalize on their kind of push. But Arx with a nice nade. I think the big savior of that round, though, was uh, Renshira. Yeah, he's, down the angle. he's been kind of uh, the player who grabs the bull by the horns whenever things don't go their way. I think it's more that the fact, like, um, grabbing the bull by the horns kind of, in, in, I think, implies that he's been very aggressive, but I don't think Renshira is that kind of player. Like, he'll just sit at a very tight angle. Yeah. He'll kill absolutely everyone who comes through that angle. Mm. And he's just so good. It, like, we, you see often, like, someone will hold a tight angle and someone else will just run past and then that's it. Like He reads the game very well. He's very he smart He reads player. it. He knows where the pre uh -huh. are. He's able to just, like, he's just being one of those players who just holds an angle yeah. and you can't kill him. He'll just kill you. That's why he's been the Blackbird player as I well. I kind of feel that he is similar to what uh, WTG do with fours. You know, he's yes, the guy who yes. would sit and all of a sudden appear out of nowhere with two kills, swings momentum back into your team yeah. and then that kind of elevates other players, allows Shaiko to start pushing in aggressively and try and get something else on the board and really make that mainstay play. It's just a very well-formulated setup from BDS. Well, <laughs> this is looking beautiful for BDS right now on the first map. A really dominant performance. G2 have a massive hill to climb now. They've got to get five rounds in a row if they want to bring this in. And a bit of a change up here for G2, as Kanto is going to be bringing the Mozzie this time, and Pengu is going to move on to the Jaeger instead. No smoke. No smoke. I don't mind no smoke here. We kind of talked, we touched on that as well during BDS's defenses because they brought a mute here actually. Yeah, no team's really favoring the smoke, but if you look at from probably Goga's perspective, he couldn't really utilize that operator to the best where he was trapped inside a freezer. Yeah. BDS, nothing's changed from their lineup, just pretty atypical standard stuff. You have. Of course, hard breach, denial if there is electro claws, which there is for G2. Uh, IQ there for the Valkyrie cameras, and Valkyrie's another operator that is very strong cafe. I would say probably her second best map, but uh, constantly being her first. Well, we'll have a look how things go down. Edge are going to go out, and it looks like G2, much heavier hold of piano coming out from their side. And BDS got to be careful about this one. They want to make sure what's going on. RX making sure that he can't get run out on from the bottom of white here. We'll see exactly how it's going to go down, but BDS with a very kind of spread out attack at the moment. I mean, they're kind of geared up towards this red side tank. No one has actually made their way into the building just yet. Um, um Shaiko? Shaiko? What's happened? <laughs> How's that happen then? It's kind of a waste of utility coming out from his side, and uh, that electrical, of course, was still deployed on that piano wall and since been taken off, but. It could get redeployed at any moment, and that is, of course, the very big fear of that whole thing. Shaq is going to move down. And he's got to save his X-Carrows. He can't put another X-Carrows on the wall and piano. He's got to save them for the eventual push into sight. Yeah, they need at least one for the Freezer. Just create that angle again for Renshira to hold in towards Freezer. And BDS taking their time a lot slower. This time, uh, during the last round, they were already in piano. Kanto, another opening death. I think that's the sixth one. Great droning for BDS, though, to know that he was down there and uh -huh. to be able to wallbang him, Shaiko, just knowing exactly where the angle was, though. 
I like the shake up from G2, trying to play a heavy C4, perhaps catching yeah. BDS by surprise. Because if you look at it, BDS, they were inside the piano with like a minute to go. Didn't have to check below. They were straight in. A C4 could have really helped G2 to try and stop that pressure, especially if you could target and shear the position he was at. And, and now for BDS, they've eliminated that threat. They have the man advantage. They're in piano. 45 seconds to go. No smoke on the board from G2, more importantly. The Maestro where this one's going to go. The Maestro coming piano is actually going to be able to take those Excaras off the board. However, Pengu finds his death from panics up on the skyline. Noon is going to have to try and rotate up white to help out his teammates. Gogo does put one kill on the board for himself. It's Farming gets one of his own as well. And Farming gets another one as well. All the spray comes through from heaven, but he's not able to find the kill onto Panics. Oh, what? How did that happen? Rafael just runs all the way in, takes them down, and Panics with a pistol whip from for the hand solo pistol is going to take them down. What was this from Panics? Oh, oh my god. That just all happened all so suddenly, Demo. Fastest shot in the Wild West. BDS 7-1. Steam roll. They have flattened G2 on their pick. And we still have another one to go. And if you look at it, it's Consulate. Probably not going to go favorably for G2, but we'll see you after the break. Predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight, everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android. 